This is unbelievable to me. This 32-year-old woman made 42,000 individual returns using 31 different Amazon accounts, and she got busted and thrown in jail this past week. Okay, she made $100,000 in the scheme. Basically, she figured out and she fooled Amazon that she paid for shipping costs on all the returns, but she didn't, and so then Amazon kept reimbursing her. So over five years, she made $100,000. Now, officials said that all 31 of her Amazon accounts were registered to her name and her Tampa address. So Amazon actually issued this statement. We have processes to detect suspicious behavior. We have teams that investigate and take action quickly. Okay, this was going on for five years, 42,000 returns on 31 Amazon accounts with the same name and the same address. Okay. I read that the tip off for Amazon was the return of a calculator. It just started to all add up. <laughs> hey, all right, lactose last week was the best one yet. I get that. And welcome one and all to yet another show, the Kim Commando Show. You can find us on 400 top stations from coast to coast. And we talk about living the best digital life ever. It's all about your online security, privacy, if there's any left of that all those gadgets and gizmos. We talk about making money and saving money. And you can also find us on the American Forces Network. I love this. 175 different countries and 200 U.S. Naval Coast Guard and the Navy's Military Seal of Command ships at sea. And we appreciate you all. And it's called the Kim Commando Show because after all, I'm America's beloved digital goddess, Kim Commando here with you once again. We're not worthy. Mm -hmm. We're not worthy. Yeah, I'll say. This show is totally jam-packed. I had trouble putting it together because there's just so much that I want to tell you. And let's get started with five things that you need to know. I mean, I scour the tech news each and every day for our daily tech updates, our website, and of course, this three-hour weekend radio show. And a few days ago, some of the biggest names in big tech, they testified before the Senate Commerce Committee. I don't know if you had a chance to look at this. And this time, I'll tell you, the, the hearings were just heated. They were testy. And the thing is, you have Facebook's Mark Zuckerberg, Google's Sundar Pichai and Twitter's Jack Dorsey. They aren't really afraid of being forced to break up their companies. What they're really afraid of, and this is really interesting, is the repeal of a law giving them special protection against libel and slander. This is very important. It's section 230 of the Communications Decency Act of 1996. Think about that, 1996. Did we really even have an internet then? Not so much. But here's the deal, is that this law protects big tech from any lawsuits resulting from lies posted by anonymous users. And we see it all the time, don't we, on social media. False, libelous statements being plastered online by people, and no one can sue big tech. But meanwhile, this is what always irks me. All radio, television, newspapers, and magazines, we're all held responsible for everything that we broadcast and everything that we publish. It just doesn't seem fair. But it goes way beyond just making statements that aren't true. It's also about speech that Facebook and Twitter police themselves, basically deciding what you can and can't see on the various social media services. So Twitter has no qualms about blocking political content that they decide isn't true, but it's okay for some reason when the leader of Iran takes to Twitter to question if the Holocaust actually happened, because that apparently doesn't violate their policies. So the question is, where do you draw the line? And why is it up to them in the first place? And if it's something that all the big tech companies agree on, like keeping Section 230 on change, that's usually a clear sign that it's not really good for everyone else. And speaking of bad news, social media totally lit up at the sight of Jack Dorsey's beard. Did you see that during the congressional hearings? I mean, talk about COVID hair. No matter how much money he has, that beard does not grow on me. But instead of trying to save face, maybe Jack should just shave his face. All right, number two, the party's over. In March, ISPs around the country suspended data caps when all of us found ourselves just working from home or going to school at home, or worse, unemployed. Well, that nice gesture is coming to an end, and going over your monthly data cap is going to lead to some big charges on your bill. I got it myself. I got an alert this past week that came in my email that said, well, you guys are over. It's going to cost you an extra 20 bucks this month. So think about all of your internet habits while you're still at home. How much data are you using? What about the kids? What about all your streaming devices and your smart devices? The key is that you really just want to figure out just how much internet that you're really using per month. 
So instead of risking an overage like I have, it may make sense to upgrade your plan because you can save some money in the long run. You can reduce uh, video service. You can reduce the quality from HD to SD and you can do audio only calls. So there are some ways that you can shrink that data usage. And we have a whole bunch of tips over at commando.com. But when you start thinking about it, the pandemic is kind of like a Netflix series, right? When you think it's over, suddenly another season just gets released. Number three, zombies aren't just for movies anymore. We throw away a lot of stuff here in the United States. And when it comes to gadgets, we often don't throw them away the right way. Lithium ion batteries in particular are everywhere in today's tech, aren't they? From laptops to smartphones, they're also highly flammable, causing plenty of headaches for those in the waste collection industry. So listen to this. According to fire detection services manufacturer Fire Rover, fires at waste facilities have grown more than 25%. That's right, since 2016. That's because we just throw away all of our gadgets and these zombie batteries, as they call them, can just easily catch fire or they can set fire using the Amazon Kindle. I mean, I'm talking about all kinds, large ones that power your laptop, tiny versions that are even in those greeting cards. And that's why it's always important that you recycle all your gadgets the right way. We've got a ton of tips over at commando.com. You can even hand over your dead batteries. Of course, that would be free of charge. Number four, this is so interesting to me. Amazon really wants to know why you're not shopping at Amazon. Okay, it's called the Amazon Shopper Panel and you can make some money off of this. It's a new program that asks you to upload up to 10 receipts from purchases that you have made anywhere else from grocery stores to department stores. Okay, did you buy something at Costco? Okay, how could you? Okay, a grocery trip to Walmart. Oh, the humanity of that. Then you take short surveys on your shopping habits that can earn you up to $10 in Amazon rewards every month. Now, among other things, Amazon says that they're gonna improve product selection, help advertisers better understand. Okay, that means that they're gonna be collecting more data too. So to join in, you have to have the new Amazon Shopper Panel app on your iPhone or Android. If you've already been invited to join, you're good to go, otherwise there is a waiting list. Um, by the way, here's a really important shopping tip for Amazon. Do not order hay for your horse off Amazon. Why? Because after a few days, they're going to ask for the feedback. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I wasn't even drinking when I got that one. All right, number five, broken iPhones, broken relationships. You have to imagine that people that are responsible for repairing iPhones get a load of the story. A couple dropped off an iPhone to be repaired. No problem. The guy says, we'll have it ready for a few days. So when the repairman popped the back off the iPhone, he found a note inside along with a $100 bill. The note said, please tell my wife that the phone is unfixable. She really wants to check the call history. Obviously, the husband was up to no good. So this being 2020, and you can't go meet your friends in a bar to talk about things like this. You, of course, take a video and you go to TikTok. And so the repairman said, what should I do? Should I tell the wife or should I repair the phone or should I just tell the guy to go pound sand? I'm not going to be involved. There are all kinds of mixed responses. Um, but here's the deal. She upped the ante after she found out because she showed up a day early and she offered to pay him $200 to fix the phone, which he apparently agreed to in a follow-up TikTok video. Now, a lot of people say, well, you know, this just seems too fabricated. It can't be true. Okay, this is like way more drama than anything you'll find on Apple TV Plus because they have like hardly no shows. But relationships are a lot like algebra. You often look at your exes and you wonder why. <laughs> okay. All right, let me tell you about iMemories. Oh, I love iMemories. You know, here's the deal. It's like we were over at a friend's house this past week and I was like, Mary, you know, do you remember when the kids were in fourth grade? She's like, yeah. I'm like, hey, look, I have the video right on my phone. It's so great because if you're like me, you probably have a box of these old videotapes and film reels and photos. They're just sitting there doing nothing and degrading in the closet. And these obsolete formats contain your most treasured memories, but you can't watch them because you don't have a VCR and you don't have a projector. Well, here's the deal. iMemories makes it so easy. They modernize all your old memories by professionally converting them to crystal clear digital format. That's right. I mean. We sent in a box of 35 millimeter slides from Barry when he was just a kid. And it looks like photos that we just took the other day. It's really amazing. 
You just send iMemories all your home, old home movies and photos with their mail-in kit, and then you get back your originals. And then once, dis, once they are digitized, this is where the fun starts, is that you can view and share them instantly on your phone, your tablet, your computer, your TV. And iMemories is the only digitizing company that offers a mobile app. So viewing and sharing on your phone, your iPad, your Android device, it's really easy. They're the most trusted. They are the largest digitizing company in the world with over 1 million satisfied companies. And they do all of the work right here in the United States. As a matter of fact, in Scottsdale, Arizona. So share the joy of reliving your family memories. It makes a great holiday gift. It truly does. Go to imemories.com slash Kim and use this special code. It's Kim25 and you're going to get 25% off your order. That's I-M-E-M-O-R-I-E-S.com slash Kim. Code Kim25 for 25% off your order. I'll tell you, you don't want to miss out. This is such a great, great sponsor of the show. And it's a great company and they provide such a great service, really. That's imemories.com slash Kim. All right, coming up in our digital life hack, we had a call last week from a gentleman who was trying to figure out like how he could make sure that he's there when Amazon drops off packages because he's afraid of porch pirates and all kinds of good things like that. So we took that question and we created what I would consider the most comprehensive guide on the entire internet on making sure that you are getting all your Amazon orders. You can use it the high tech way, the low tech way, photos and texts and all kinds of good things. And of course, we have all of your phone calls here on this coast to coast broadcast of the Kim Commando Show. Ooh, Michael, you're on Mark today. A little Halloween music for you here on the Kim Commando Show. Hey, listen, our T-Mobile Unlimited listener line's open. That's one 825 5254 And just a reminder, I love to get your questions. And it's really easy for me to get your questions. I'm the only one that reads them, by the way, is that you go to commando.com and at the bottom of every page, there's a link that says contact us. Just follow all those little breadcrumbs until you get to a section that says Ask Kim. And then that's where you can leave me your note. And again, that's Ask Kim, uh, the little form over at commando.com. Jay in Aurora, Colorado. Hi there, Jay. Hi, Kim. Thanks for taking my call. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. What's going on? Excellent. Hey, um, we're out here in Aurora, Colorado, and then my family just bought a new home. We have a Google Hub in it. And uh, truthfully, we don't know much about this, but we do know that we want to kind of dive into the automated home uh, scenario. And some of the things that we're looking for are um, maybe video doorbells that will work or we're able to uh, adjust the temperature of the home or open the garage door when kiddo gets home from school. Um, and we're wondering what are those products that really work well with the Google Hub. And one of the other pieces is we kind of want room to room uh, communication so that we don't have to yell up, you know, a flight of stairs to, <laughs> to get kiddo for dinner for that type of thing. So, um, but yeah, we'd be, we'd love to hear your, your, uh, your thoughts on it. Well, you know, here's the deal. You don't have to yell anymore. I text whenever I need Ian or Barry. I just text him and say, dinner's ready. It's, it seems to work much better than yelling at anywhere around the house. Um, well, Absolutely. well, here's the deal. The Google Hub is example exactly that. It used to be called the Nest Hub, and it's just the central point. You'd say, yeah, how, is it, does it, do you have one that has the screen, obviously, yes? Correct. Yeah. Okay. And now there's no camera on board with that, just to let you know. It's just a, it's just mm -hmm. a screen that you're going to be able to tell your Google Assistant to do whatever you want to do your beck and call. I mean, maybe even go get a beer out of the refrigerator when the big game's on so you don't have to. Well, it won't do that, but it'll do a lot of other things. <laughs> Um, you mentioned lights. Uh, and so what you're going to do is you're going to look for products that are endorsed by Google or known to work with the Google Hub, okay? Because you have different type of systems. Of course, you've got Amazon. They have the Echo Show. And then you've got Apple with their HomePod. And so we're going to all stick with this Google account. And so like for light bulbs, you're looking at like Philips Hue. And so you could control the lights. You could say... You know, in kiddo's room, it's 10 o'clock every night. I want you to turn off all the lights. And so you can do things like that. Um, yeah. it, and then with your, uh, as far as turning the air on and off, the heat on and off, that becomes your Nest thermostat, okay? Mm -hmm. um, you, you also have a way that you can connect things to this Google Hub without it necessarily buying a new product is that there are things called smart plugs. So you can put a smart plug connect that to anything, and that light suddenly comes yeah. a smart light. Okay. So you're not stuck with, you have, you have all these different options. Um, you have the Yale Smart Lock, 
that will work with Google. So you can say, you know, make sure the door is locked every night at 6 p.m. or open it up for kiddo at 3. And then I want you to lock it again at 3.30. Um, there's the Tailwind garage door openers that will do exactly what you mentioned. There's also the Ratio Smart Sprinklers that can also make sure that you're only watering when you need to have water. So if it just rained, why turn on the sprinklers? Let me do this. Let's put together a whole tip for you and for everybody else about all the great products and all the great things you can do with a Google Hub because it's a heck of a lot of fun. And yes, the Jetsons are right around the corner. Thank you so much for your call today, Jay. Hey, let's talk about CarShield. Seeing that check engine light can give anyone anxiety, but with coverage from CarShield, you won't dread unexpected repairs. Visit carshield.com and use code Kim and you're gonna save 10%. A deductible may apply. Once again, that address is carshield.com. Use code Kim to save 10%. Don't go away. More of your calls coming right up. All right, a couple of things I wanna pass along before we go to our special caller that's an amazing young man. I can't wait to, to hear from him. Is that if you're working from home and you're using Zoom, I just wanna let you know that they have now added end-to-end uh, -end encryption. And we've got all the tips on how to set it up over at commando.com. And again, that's Zoom encryption. So make sure that you use that if you're using Zoom. And I don't know if you noticed, but it's election season. Yeah, I know. Well, there are now ballot tracking software. It does exist, but the options vary from state to state. And so if you want to track your vote and also the election results, uh, there are some places that we have found for you, like Ballot Scout and Ballot Tracks, which follows your ballot until it's actually processed. There are also options to help if you think that you made a mistake. As far as election day, uh, you don't have to be glued to the TV. There are tons of alternatives. The Associated Press is gonna post real-time results online along with other reputable news services. Note, that does not include Facebook. Over at commando.com, we've got a lot of details on tracking the status of your ballot, staying up to date on election results, and just remember that if you haven't voted yet, it's too late to mail it in. And I've got all kinds of jokes about undelivered mail, but nobody seems to get them. All right, what's scarier than the pandemic? Anyone, anyone? Yes, how about, yes, how about the Asian murder hornets? It's like, wait, is this a joke? No. Um, tech isn't advanced to shrink us down to the size of ants like that Marvel ant movie, but tiny technology is being used to track a huge problem. Yes, the Asian murder hornets. And it's 2020, we have to be worried about murder hornets. Well, on the Kim Commando Show special caller line, we have Vikram Ayer. He is a PhD student at the University of Washington. And in July, he made the headlines and I actually watched a news report with him because he puts these low power, lightweight, uh, wireless camera systems, and he attached it to the back of a live beetle to understand how to deploy a wireless vision in very small robots. Well, let me tell you about murder hornets. They're about two inches long. I looked it up, two inches long. How fast do you think these things go? You're wrong. They go 25 miles per hour, these little murder hornets. So Bikram, thank you so much for joining us. And let's talk about these little trackers that you're putting on these hornets. Um, how small are they? Yeah, so these these little trackers are um, about, uh, say, like six by 10 millimeters. Um, they weigh a little more than a toothpick. Wow. So how exactly do they work? I mean, how do you attach it to the insect? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we've actually tried a couple of different approaches for um, for attaching these little um, these little radio transmitters to the insects. Uh, but first, a little note about how they work. Basically, these things are sending out a radio signal periodically. Um, for example, a couple times a second. And the idea is that uh, by you know listening to how strong that radio signal is, you can figure out how close you are to um, to the insect. Uh, and the the goal was to be able to try to follow these things back. To, um, back to their nest. Right. Now, to actually attach them on there, um, one of the approaches that I've used uh, for working with some other insects before, like beetles, moths, um, bumblebees, um, is a little drop of glue. Uh, actually, super glue just works pretty well for that. Um, we found that in our, uh, in our first attempt, when we were trying to tag one of these hornets, um, they're actually a lot more active than some of the other animals that I've worked with. And... Um, 
and you know doing this out in the field gets kind of tricky and uh, when they're moving around right. um, we put them on ice to you know to cool them down make sure they don't they don't move as much um, but we still end up getting a little bit of glue on one of uh, one of that hornet's wings so the other thing that we tried doing was um, uh, just a little piece of dental floss actually um, <laughs> wow. we made a little noose yeah yeah it actually works really well um, the you know these animals have a um, they have three segments of their body the head the thorax and the abdomen and kind of at the joint between the lower two um, there's uh, there's this kind of skinnier part where you can slip a little noose around and um, we were able to attach the tracker that way Wow so so how's the tracking going I mean so you put the transmitter on and it's doing by radio are you tracking them by like then by drone or how exactly does that work? Yeah. So what, what we did was um, in, uh, in the, the tracking attempts that we've done, uh, we've actually had a couple of people on the ground walking around with these antennas um, looking for uh, basically looking for that signal. This is the same sort of approach that, um, uh, that has been used for, you know, other types of wildlife tracking applications. Um, that's certainly something that uh, I've thought about mounting the same sort of thing on a drone. And really the only reason we didn't try that was, um, uh, just, you know, trying to get all this working in a short amount of time, but certainly doable. Um, but yeah, basically we, uh, you know, we attached the, the tag to the insect and wow. released it to let it fly. And then we walked around um, and followed it uh, back to back to its nest. And then, so how long does the battery last? Because it's got to be teeny tiny as well. Yeah, so that's actually one of the biggest challenges with building anything this small is um, you need some kind of power source. And the battery ends up being one of the heaviest parts of, of the whole thing. Um so the and, and you know exactly how long that battery lasts depends on a few different factors like for example how fast or how often it's transmitting um so for example the uh the first the first tracker that we used one of the ones that I built in the lab lasted about 12 hours when wow. broadcasting um about twice a second um that's, the, you know what that's a long time that's fa- that's fantastic yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. For just a uh, little, it, little tiny thing. So, so how is the tracking going so far? I mean, have you were you, you were able to identify the nest and and have you have you had any other observations? Yeah. So, in our second live tracking attempt, um, uh, we found an actual nest, and that was eradicated this past uh, weekend, I believe. Um, my expertise is more on the tech side, and I've been, you know, the, through this whole effort, I've been working with folks at the Washington State Department of Agriculture, um, a team of entomologists there, and so they went out and actually um, destroyed the hive. Oh, you know what? That must make you feel good. I mean, that because of your technology and the tracking that they were able to do that. That's pretty awesome. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, from the beginning, you know, I... Uh, I reached out to these guys uh, because we've been developing this sort of technology uh, in our lab here at UW and um, just thought that it would be, or it's kind of the perfect application for the sorts of things that I've been building anyway. And I just really wanted to help out if, if at all possible. Well, you know what, Vigram, you're doing fabulous work. And thank you so much for joining us. And good luck with all your research. Keep us posted on any developments. I mean, I remember when murder hornets were just like, I mean, in my day, we had killer bees, but now we've got murder hornets. Ugh. Isn't that amazing technology, though, to get that with dental floss? I don't think I'll ever look at dental floss the same way again. All right, let's go ahead and do our digital life hack. This week is brought to you by Epson. With so many of us working from home or helping our kids with homework, it's really important to have the right printer. The Epson EcoTank is a new type of printer. It doesn't use cartridges, so you can stop buying expensive ink cartridges and save yourself the frustration of replacing ink cartridges ever again. The Epson EcoTank printers have super-sized, easy-to-fill ink tanks. Let me tell you, they just come with a ridiculous amount of ink. This means no more cartridges. If you're like me, 
You've tried rationing your printing or avoid printing important documents because you want to save yourself the time, effort, energy, and money because you don't want to replace those expensive ink cartridges. But with the Epson EcoTank, you don't have to worry about running out of ink. So you can just start printing in color all you want. Kiss expensive cartridges goodbye, but you have to hurry. Because EcoTank is changing the way that people print, these printers are literally flying off the shelf. So go ahead and print all your work reports, your task lists, and your kids' homework assignments. You can do it all in color too. EcoTank makes it easy. So make the switch today. Add EcoTank to your online shopping list so you can just fill and chill. Epson EcoTank printers available at Sam's Club, Target, Walmart, and at epson.com slash EcoTank Kim. All right, this week's digital life hack is something that everybody needs to look at because I know that you're all shopping on Amazon, okay? So we're gonna tell you how to make sure that you track and receive all of your Amazon orders the right way and the way that works for you. So like, number one, you can set up text alerts so you can stay in the know. That all happens under your account page. So this way you'll get a text whenever your packages are out for delivery or maybe they have been delivered. Caveat doesn't work with third-party sellers. You can also get delivery photos so you know exactly where your package is. It's part of the photo on delivery. We'll tell you exactly how to set that up too. And if you don't want the photos, you're worried about your privacy, we're gonna tell you how to opt out. Number three is you can try the Amazon key. This allows drivers to drop off packages inside your gate, your garage, or your home. Right now, because of COVID, they're not doing in-home deliveries, but you can get in garage or inside your gate. Again, we'll tell you exactly what you need to have. Like for example, the garage door opener hub from Chamberlain can be used to upgrade any garage door after 1993. There's also the Amazon locker, 900 cities and towns across the US. So if you don't wanna get the package to your house, you can have it delivered to a locker. And if you're not home to pick up your orders, well, there are now some these really high tech boxes that you can put right outside from DoorBox and CleverMade that the drivers, whether it's uh, UPS, FedEx, Amazon, US Postal Service, is that they can actually open these up because you're gonna give them the code and then they lock it up afterwards. And then in addition to that, we're gonna tell you how to set up all these various security codes. You can learn more about this and get all the links that you need over at commando.com, of course, the official homepage of the Kim Commando Show. Head over to K-O-M-A-N-D-O.com. Once you're there, hit the link that says Kim Show. I still can't get that thought out of my mind that he attached it using dental floss on a murder hornet. Wow, isn't technology grand? Hey, listen, stay right where you are coming up. We're gonna tell you about some scams that are happening right now because it is the final days of the election. And I want you to be aware of that. I want you to tell your family members and friends too. And of course, we have more of your phone calls here on the Kim Commando Show. And just a quick reminder, if you're listening to the show ever gets interrupted for whatever the reason, you can always get the entire show over at getkim.com. Uh, David in Norwich, Vermont. Hello there, David. How are you? Hi, Kim. We're doing very well. Thanks so much for taking our call. It must be beautiful up there this time of year, huh? With the leaves changing? It's it's great. It's been a beautiful fall, and we had our first snowfall. Oh, my so gosh. You're excited. kidding. And that's part of why I'm calling. We're so excited. My son's a hockey player. He's all excited about the snow. But uh, with his hockey, we take a lot of video okay. of games and practices. And we, we don't really like to delete things because we don't in real time know which is going to be useful. So we keep it all. And uh, to our surprise, we're now accumulating data at around, I don't know, 200 to 300 gigabytes a month of video wow. data. And I really need some help from you about the best way to archive it. Um, and, thought about Blu-rays, uh, and that's a little labor intensive. And I looked at cloud storage, and now getting into that kind of gigabytes, it gets a little pricey. And I thought about uh, NAS, but I just don't know where to start. So That's what you're going to want is a NAS drive and a network okay. attached storage drive for everybody who doesn't know what that acronym is because anytime you talk about anything tech, right? We, we always have acronyms and we just assume that everybody knows what it is. Um, basically, it's a box that you're going to be hooking onto the internet and with the NAS drives that make, then there's software that you can add onto it that would help you manage the media. There's a program called Plex Media um, okay. and then you turn it into a Plex server uh, you know, they're not cheap, I'll tell you that much. I mean, you're, mm -hmm. you're looking at a, a 32 terabyte, which is what I'd recommend for you. Okay. Uh, 
and it's a Western digital, it's a dual core processor and all that other good stuff. Uh, so with 32, you're probably looking at about thirteen, fourteen hundred dollars $1,400. Okay. okay. Um, but if this is the type of data that you're saving, because maybe one day he's going to, obviously he's going to apply to college for a scholarship, right? Or right. maybe go pro, is that you want to make sure that it was like, hey, do we have that? No, we got rid of that, right? I mean, you don't want to sit there because then you're going to have total regret. So, so what we'll do is let me put together a list of some recommended NAS drives for you, for you to okay. take a look at. Um, and I'm going to ask uh, John, who's our tech guy here at the show. I mean, John is like who I go to for my tech support and he fixes everything for me. I mean, he does. He's just, okay. he's amazing. He's so smart and he's so nice. And you know how like sometimes you have like people who are really techie and they can't communicate. Okay, that's not John. John is fabulous. He's got a great personality. Um, and he's also answers a lot of questions for our folks over at the Q&A message board over at the Commando community too. So if you ever have a really tech question, you can drop it there. And John was, was always happy to help everybody out. So we'll put together some things about NAS drives for you to take a look at. Um, but just keep in mind that even though they state they have 32 terabytes of storage in reality, you're gonna lose about a quarter of that for fault tolerance. And so even though it sounds big, just know that 25% is just gonna go hasta la vista immediately. And David, thank you so much for your call and congrats to your son. That's really amazing. I love when kids are doing so well and they find their passion at such a young age. Hey, thanks for watching a past episode of my national radio show. That's why it's called The Kim Commando Show Rewind. Now, to get the entire show, all three hours, when it airs live, or you can get on demand, head over to getkim.com and you can become a member of the Commando community. There are a ton of perks aside from just the show. You get free ebooks, a place to get answers to your tech questions, and more of me. So come on, what are you waiting for? Click that link right now and become a member. And thank you.